everybody. Um, I'm Brad Wells, and these two wonderful people are my crew members. I'm Martin Hopkins, I'm from MC majoring in Natural Resource Management. I'm Tim Gabriel. Tim Gabriel. I'm also from UOG. Um, we're going to talk about hermit crabs, but that's going to be just a second. Um, so, I think I'm going to try to try to take you on a three-week journey here. <laughs> so, about three weeks ago, I'm sitting at a table in an NMC classroom with these two over here, whose names I don't know at the time, and we're told, go do science. <laughs> and so, we had to discuss what we were going to do. We had some advice. Quite a, quite a lot of advisement in our group's case, but we're sitting at that table and we're discussing what we want to do, and we decide we want to look at what controls population size of a, any given organism. And so we started to discuss the things that go into that. What can control population sizes? And so we decided that there were three things for, that we wanted to look at. Predators, environmental factors, and food availability. Um, when, so, with, with any given organism, if there's more predators, you're going to have, have less of the prey. And that, that's just something to see that makes sense. Um, environmental factors, there's a, a number of things that it can be. Um, if you're in forests, it can be canopy cover, it can be the stuff on the ground. Uh, a whole assortment of biotic, abiotic factors. Um, and food availability, if there's more food than an animal likes to eat, there's going to be more of that population. If there's less, there's going to be less than that, that animal's population. So when we discussed this, we decided we, we, wanted to, we wanted to pick one of each of those to look at, but we needed an organism to work on. Um, why did we choose hermit crabs? They, they haven't been looked at a whole lot. It is a big thing. I mean, there's, there, there's not a, a huge amount of papers out there looking at their population sizes and what influences those dynamics but also they're pretty cute, and, and that's cool too. So we had to discuss the things that can, that can harm hermit crabs specifically and control their population. So predators, predators can be birds, they can be larger lizards, um, they, they can be small things that, that we didn't really think about at all, um, microbial type things, there's a, uh, a flatworm, that preys on snails. Hermit crabs like snail shells. I don't know what effect they would have on that. So there's a lot of things that could be predators. Um, habitat, we were thinking the things that might most influence crabs are, are canopy cover and um, uh, percent karst visible. Um, and for food, turns out hermit crabs eat about anything. Um, blood, anything you can if you have a hermit crab that you keep at home as a pet, you can pretty much throw anything in there and they'll eat it. So what we decided to look at were fruits uh, on, a, on a premise that there, there might be more in Guam as a lack of, due to lack, a lack of birds. We didn't measure that though, um, but that, that's fine. So, so we moved on and we came up with these hypotheses. Um, we decided current crab populations will be, lim will be limited by bird abundance. So, where there's more birds, there's less hermit crabs. In order, in order to show this to be true, what we would have expected to find was inside animals that have birds, there would be less hermit crabs. If it, if it was the opposite, we'd have more hermit crabs in Guam. Well, yes, Guam. Well. Um, um, our second hypothesis. Where that was that current crab population will be controlled by the amount of visible cars present. So, if you go out into, a, into the forest and you look on the ground, um, you can you can estimate the amount of cars that you see. Our thought here was that if there's more cars, there's more spots for hermit crabs to hide and get away from predators. So, if there's a bunch of holes they can go in, you'll have more hermit crabs. Um, we would, we would expect to see a correlation there, which you'll see the graph later. And our third hypothesis was that hermit crab populations will be controlled by the amount of fruit available. So we, we would expect to see more, we, we would expect to see more fruit disappear from our plots 
if current credits were controlled by fruit fruit abundance. And that, that's what I got to say about that. Here's her. All right. Now I'm going to talk about the method for how we conduct our project. Well, we have, unfortunately, we have to go out in the jungle, look for our cars or the native forest to do our uh, sites. And uh, basically, we are looking for the native forest to do uh, our set. This is how we actually do the setup. We got 50 meters transit, and uh, between each transit, we have 10 meters in between part. And uh, we got a meter and a, I mean one and a meter square for each plug. In each plug, we we got we lay down a coconut cake and some sort of fruits. Um, what I meant about physical cards is it, we we got those photos from Saipan and Guam, which is uh, kind of interesting to see. Uh, on Saipan, it is more like a bare box, and on um, Guam, it's the uh, it most like covered with moss. The fruit that we decided to use is, well, we actually use the fruits that are common on each of those islands, which is uh, on Seita, we use the scarlet cord and the lipstick tree. And on uh, Guam, we use the pandanus, neosporma, and also the lipstick tree. Well, our resort, uh, I mean, our, sorry, our results uh, on the y-axis we have the urban crabs and our x-axis we have the, uh, the two islands which is Guam and Saipan and this is what we have we found that there are more urban crab on Saipan than Guam and for the person cars between two islands we found that also Saipan has the more cars than Guam the average crafts between uh, the, the person cars, we actually don't have the correlation between the average of crafts and the person cars. The fruits that we've taken for, uh, within our concepts, uh, it's not, there's not much that fruit that we've taken. So you can see Right, it's uh, it's not really so. So um, for discussion, going back to our hypothesis, um, we thought that there will be more hermit crabs on Guam with the lack of bird predators, but our results um, disproved that. There was actually more on Saipan where they have more birds. So uh, I guess we ruled out bird predators. And where there are more, um, we thought that where there would be more cars, there would be more hermit crabs because that's the kind of habitat they usually like. And there was no significant relation between hermit crabs and visible cars, so we have to rule out um, visible cars as a, a factor. And we thought that fruits of, fruit availability would be a controlling factor for hermit crabs, just because if you know there's more um, food available for them. But it turns out that um, there was no significant relation between hermit crabs and fruits, so we have to rule that out again. For future studies, since bird predators were out, I mean, you can still look at other possible predators. There's the monitor lizards, um, like Rabbitchnerier um, microbes, and possibly flatworms. Um, besides cars, uh, other environmental factors could be looked at, like um, canopy covers and possibly the moss um, cover that you saw, which was more here on Guam. And since fruits were ruled out, maybe other um, sources of food could be looked at, like um, just specifically looking at preference of food for hermit crabs, and that could be another future study. And this looks like a, maybe a simple project, but it was a lot of physical activity. Morning and 12 midnight. <laughs> uh, we have fun doing it though. And we'd like to acknowledge everyone on this list and the EBO of um, our classmates. And, and everybody who came to watch Brazil. Thank you.
species. We looked at the any hermit crabs we saw that was uh, not species specific. It was just the genus. Uh, I can't see them. Okay. So and um, uh, did you did you notice? Any difference in shell types that they were using between islands? They almost all were using the African snail shells. On both islands? Yes. And did you think that maybe, if you have the idea that maybe shell availability might be a... We actually did go through and count shells in all of our plots. Uh, we didn't find enough of them so that we could actually... That there weren't... Within our plots we didn't find a whole lot of shells so that it didn't, didn't really pan out for us. Um, but that's, that may well be a limiting factor for population size, yes. So, um, so you guys went to native cross for this, or? Yes, we did. So did you think that maybe hermit crabs would be more abundant in um, other kinds of forests or places? Because I know that hermit crabs are more abundant in places where there's a lot of trash and dumping. What do you want? No? Okay, so we actually accidentally ran a transect into Tani Tani Forest, um, and we didn't use that data here. But we, so we did gather some data uh, on that, and it, it appeared as though, and this isn't statistically proven, but it appeared as though Tani Tani Forest had more hermit crabs than Cars Forest did, so there's that. Anybody else? <laughs> okay, one, one thing I just want to share are the, the three rules that you came up with for your group. We have four now. Four rules? Yeah, <laughs> there are four rules. Our first rule was don't hit the driver. <laughs> because the driver's name hit. Continue. Second rule. Second rule. Oh, we can't yell at her. We can't make Marlon feel bad. And you can't boss me around. That's how they call 